Hi, Eric Gibault, ericgibault.com, and today, thanks to photosura.com, I'm going to present you the Flash Godox V1. Let's start. First of all, thank you very much to Photosura because uh, right now with quarantine, it's almost impossible to, to have gear to try. And they got this to me and another Flash also. I'll make a separate video for that. And uh, so I think it's great. So I can actually review something right now. And uh, for people who are interested in this flash, I will explain more or less how it works and uh, my impression. And I think it may help people who are deciding uh, if they need that kind of flash or not. So what's in the box? Flash. So here you've got a pouch like this. As you can see, it has a round head, not the typical rectangle uh, head. And then one thing I like about this pouch, that's why I speak about it, because you can actually do this. And you can actually put a belt here or hang it from uh, your backpack or whatever. And here's the small pocket also, where you can actually keep uh, the stand that comes with it in case you want to put a stand put on a table or somewhere and uh, very basic stand, but you can keep it here. So that's good. So I like this pouch, 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 uh, small bag. Okay, so this is why I speak about it. The battery is a lithium battery. And strangely, as you can see, there's a hole here, okay? Because uh, the battery goes in there this way, it slides in there, okay? Push, and that's it. It's here. If you want to release the battery, you press this button here, and you push the battery, and the battery comes out, okay? So this is a proprietary uh, battery, it's not uh, typical normal batteries, so this is how it comes. So what's uh, stands out is because it has a round head and uh, I know that many people say it's a copy of the Profoto Flash I can't remember the name of the, the Profoto unit but uh, actually uh, Profoto did not invent round, uh, rounded head uh, because uh, they were before and actually I think they sued Godox and uh, they didn't go anywhere because uh, they not, did not invent the round head it already existed so uh, that really stands out compared to other flashes that are re uh, rectangular. Also, this is magnetic. It means uh, there are some accessories you can actually put on the flash directly. Schlack is just magnetic. There is a dome like this to uh, get the light uh, more even. You have filters, uh, snood, and many things you can actually place on the, on the head. And that make it uh, really versatile and uh, easy to use. Something else that stands out uh, from other flashes uh, norm we normally use with square heads or rectangle head is because there is a modeling light here, a small light that you can actually uh, have a continuous uh, LED light that uh, will light the scene before you actually trigger the flash so that may help to focus or to see the orientation all this so these are the main difference between uh, this flash and other uh, more classical flash units this flash has 76 watt power the battery has uh, 2600 milliamp and uh, it says, Godox says it can fire a uh, trigger about uh, 480 uh, flashes at full power. But I saw some review, the guys were getting 600 and something, 650. So I don't know if uh, Godox was a bit uh, pessimistic over their own battery, but it seems that even, anyway, like 480 uh, flash, uh, it's not bad uh, at full power, okay? What's important, this flash is also TTL and high sync. It does high sync if your camera supports it and uh, obviously manual mode also if you want. What's important is that uh, if you're going to put the camera, uh, the flash on your camera, uh, you need to have the unit that corresponds to uh, the brand of your camera. As you can see here, the small O like Olympus. Well, for Panasonic and Olympus, you have the O model. If you have Nikon, it's an N, a Canon, a C, Sony on S, Fujifilm on F. Well, you can imagine the letters. So that's important that you actually buy the model, the, 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 the unit that corresponds to your brand. As you can see, the head, you can orient the head like this, like this. And one thing that is great is that very often we want to uh, uh, bounce uh, against uh, on the back of uh, the wall behind us, we we'll have to do that, okay? But with this flash, you just do that, and that's it. And it turns 360 degrees, but uh, this way, okay? And then this way, if you want to go, uh, it covers 360, but you cannot turn it all the way because you would probably break some cable in there, but it's orientable head, it's really practical. Here, uh, there is a lock. So actually, 
when you fix it on your camera, it really gets stand, really st uh, steady. It's really nice. It's not like some uh, screw system that sometimes it's not that uh, precise. This one, it works really fine. The head has a Fresnel uh, that has a zoom that covers, as you can see, from 28 to 105 millimeter. So we'll, uh, you will cover more or more uh, or less uh, larger or our uh, beam of light. According to Godox, uh, the recycling time at maximum power is 1.1 second. I'm going to show you, I'm remotely uh, triggering it. I'm not sure if this is 1.1 second, but I must say this is really fast for that kind of flashes uh, to have uh, to recover so to recycle so fast. So it's going to help you work really fast if you need full power and you need to have a fast recycling time. I think this is quite good. You can module the, the power from full power down to 256 uh, of power. And I think this is great because uh, you can actually uh, uh, tune it in a third or in a tenth of power. So it's really precise. You just put the light you need. But I think it's very important that you can drop down to 256 uh, power because uh, very often we, we think about full power but in many occasions we have too much light and we really need to be able to drop really low so that it goes down so much is really a plus in my opinion many people uh, are probably asking why a round head uh, well uh, actually i think it's worth it if you actually fire directly to your subject why because uh, if you have a, a rectangle head uh, what happens is that your subject is vertical and you're actually lighting horizontally. So uh, it may be strange or it may too much light to the side or this. So this is going to be a round light. So it's more harmonious, nicer. Uh, I could not make pictures in here because there's no space enough for that. You actually see the beam properly. But uh, in Godox web, uh, website, you actually see many of these pictures and you see that it makes a round light. So with a fall off on, on the side, but it's uniform, it's nice. If it's rectangle, it's not as nice. But this is if you're actually shooting directly. People who uh, are thinking that you'll get a, no a softer light with this are completely wrong. Uh, what this side, if uh, shadows are really harsh or not, is actually the size of the head and the surface. So the surface of this head is really similar to the surface of, of a rectangle head. Uh, simply it's, it's shaped different. So uh, the way it's harsh or not will be the same. What may change is if you put the accessory, the dome that goes here, uh, it will uh, send some light on the side to the ceiling indoor, speak on the ceiling, on the side, on the wall, all this. And this light that will come back will kill some of the, of the shadows but uh, it's not because the head is round, it's just the way it works. Actually, if you put uh, a, 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 what do you call that, stuff and plastic on the rectangle, uh, this, this plastic uh, accessory on a rectangle head, you will also get some light all over the place. So it will be really similar. But if you direct light to the subject, I think, yes, it's interesting to have this round head because of the fall off, okay? That it will be more uniform, more rounded, nicer probably. But if you're using this flash, off camera you put on this light stand and or you actually put on your camera but i'm going i'm actually bouncing in the back they won't see any difference because uh, the light will come back and that's it and if you're bouncing to lighter place whether it's rounded or rectangle will not make any change in my opinion or what i've the, the little i've seen this is what i see rounded is really interesting if you're shooting towards a person actually here you have three flashes you have a uh, one flash is the typical flash you put on your camera and that's it and you just use it to light and uh, that's it. Second flash, uh, you use it this way but it can also uh, master other flashes. You actually uh, manage other flashes and you trigger them thanks to this flash. Other flashes by Godox obviously if you want to uh, manage them. If it's uh, by sympathy and optical uh, slave, no. But uh, in this case you, have to, you can manage from here. And the third option is to use them as slave and have a Godox trigger, whether it can be a X2T or X1 or X Pro, and then you actually manage uh, this flash from your camera with this trigger. But you actually get three uh, possibilities in one. The first thing you're going to do is select the proper mode the way you want it to work. So uh, here there's more like a uh, small lighting here. If you click here once, here, you say you're on M mode, it's in TTL right now, but M mode, 
and uh, it means uh, your flash you use it as a standalone on your camera then you flick a second time as you can see you get some group information a b c d well the first is m because this is this flash and actually you use it on your camera but you can also manage other flashes and the third option you click here it, the color of the screen actually changes and uh, it goes as a slave mode is when you're going to use it with a trigger so once you've decided how you're going to use your flash uh, then you have a button here actually this small wheel turns but it's also a button so if i click on it as you can see it changes here it says multi ttl and m m is manual mode ttl obviously is ttl mode and multi is for stroboscopic light uh, actually in the review i made of the tt600 i explained how it works it, it, you configure the same way so not to make this video really too long uh, you can check there if you're interested in that kind of uh, stroboscopic light here's a wheel with uh, some function uh, if i click on uh, the plus minus if i click here then i can change the power so i'm in tenth of uh, power so it takes quite a time and when you have the, the the power you want just click on the center to confirm if i click on zoom top here same thing as you can hear the zoom is moving okay it's a number that changed when you're okay you just click center and there's a small uh, bulb here if i click on the bulb it switch on i click in center then it switch on the modeling light i can actually uh, fine tune the power as i want okay if i get out it's off and if i want to uh, come back to the main menu there's a small button here with a small arrow a back arrow i click here and i'm back to the normal so here there is a menu bar you have the first one that says tcm here as you can see tcm if i click on it as you can see it jumps to ttl what is that um, maybe you want to work in manual but you don't have any flash meter or you don't know how to uh, tune your, your flash well it's easy you press on, TT, uh, on TCM and then you will trigger the flash in TTL mode so you put your camera in spot metering and let's say I've got a, a, pic, a picture you want a picture of me with a, a black t-shirt so you want my face to be probably lit so you actually uh, point at my face the TTL will make the perfect measure for my face and then you go to it will bring you then to manual mode so it doesn't matter if after you make the picture pointing at my shirt or whatever uh, the light is in manual so it won't change anymore so if you don't know how to uh, configure your flash you can make a first a ttl flash and then it will go on to manual mode so that is really useful second thing here as you can see if i press here it switches on high sync or not high sync is up to eight thousandths of a second if your camera supports it and then there is something else here it says s1 s2 if you want to use this flash uh, out of your camera and you don't have any trigger to use it but you have another flash uh, that will trigger it uh, optically i don't speak of radio fre radio frequency just optically as a slave well uh, you can put uh, well if you have none it won't work s1 or s2 what is the difference if it's a manual flash that is triggering this flash uh, you put in s1 and when the the flash uh, starts this one will uh, jump at the same time but if the other flash is a ttl flash actually it makes a pre-flash and you actually just see one flash but actually there are two flashes a pre-flash and the definite flash if you're not on the s2 mode then it will uh, light at the same time as a pre-flash and when you need the real uh, flash to to go it won't trigger anymore so you must be in s2 mode so it's important if you want to use that as a slave mode optical slave mode you must switch on s1 or s2 depending on if it's a manual or ttl uh, flash that will uh, make this one trigger okay okay if you want to use this flash as a master to uh, manage other flashes uh, you have to press here okay then you can see there's a list of groups here m a b c uh, m is this flash a b c are other groups if i press here there's a menu menu bar here if i press on m it's switch on this light press again it tells me i'm in ttl i can actually uh, calculate compensation or if i want to be in manual mode it says now m and i can calculate power uh, regulate the power i want if i want the group a i click here and it switches on 
here it goes to TTL if I want so I could calculate also compensation or if I want to be in manual mode I click again I've got manual mode I can put the power on this what is very important obviously is that you have the same frequency as uh, the other flashes but we'll see it in the menu how to set the frequency so this is the way you can actually uh, same frequency I mean the same channel as uh, as the other flashes so actually you can easily manage all the flashes this way to me it seems like there is three groups plus this flash I thought there were more because uh, on my uh, trigger here I've got five groups A down to E but I'm not sure but uh, I cannot manage to get more groups I'm not sure but this is the way it works it's quite easy it works well so if you want to use this flash as a slave whether you use it with a trigger or a another flash that is master you need to press here on the on this button here okay and it will become yellow as i said before okay so the first thing you must to do is assign the group that you want here it says gr if i click on it it's uh, you can see it changes the letter here c d okay e a okay group a because i want to be on group a for example if you have several flashes you just do can give different groups because you want different power whatever this is the first thing you have to do then here you can also change uh, the mode uh, so uh, every every time you make some changes you click on the center to, to lock it to confirm here I've got in manual mode right now multi it means I can do stroboscopic light uh, even if I'm in slave mode and here I'm on TTL mode if I want to work a slave as TTL okay so you can decide on this and then there's something else uh, if you want to change power as you can see i can change power here but normally you will change power uh, directly from your trigger if i click here as you can see if i touch this it changes power as you can see it changes here but it changes here too okay so you can trigger you can change it with the trigger and the zoom if i want to change the zoom zoom is not changing from my trigger why i had the same problem with the tt600 and someone in comment explained to me if you want to be able to remotely change the zoom you must click here on zoom okay and then you must instead of having uh millimeters here you can see you drop to three lines okay it's like automatic confirm and then you will be able to change your zoom from here okay so if you, are, you see the zoom does not working it's because you need to put like three three and three iPhones and then you can manually change it from the but you can actually then change it from the trigger so now we're going to check the menu here there's a button menu button if you keep pressed a few seconds it will lock your flash it means now anyone who touches uh, or you accidentally touch a button nothing will happen so when it's configured it may be useful to lock it if you're going to to move your hand close to it that could be a good solution so if you keep press now i unlock it okay and if i press here i go to the menu so here's the menu first thing you can decide if you're going to work in meter or in feet it indicates both system so for some information it may give you if you're interested then you have the second menu it says zoom as you can see and then it says four third or 135 what is that for uh, this unit is for a uh, micro four third so if i put on four third it will give me uh, the, the 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 width of my uh, uh, my flash beam in corresponding to micro four third for example instead of telling me from 28 to 105 millimeter in full frame it will give me directly from 14 to 52 millimeter in uh, micro four third so it means i can avoid errors i know that if i've got a 25 millimeter lens i put my uh, zoom on 25 millimeter i don't have to think oh this is like 50 i should be on 50 so it's just to help it's not really dramatic anyway then you have the option so everyone to you want to enter something you just click here and then you select and then you press against to confirm okay following one is standby do you want your flash to be able to fall asleep or never if you want to fall asleep from some time after a few time a few um, few minutes without using you put on 
and then you go to the following menu which is after how much time without using it must go on standby 30 minutes or 60 minutes that will save some battery okay then you have scan scan what is it for this is really useful let's say uh, well these flashes they work on 2.4 gigahertz which is wi-fi and maybe as uh, your uh, area if there's a lot of other frequencies interferences and gives you some problem so you can actually scan the the spec the, the, the situation and give you the best the best uh, channel you should use so you would start i would go and start here and it's scanning right now to give tell me what's the best uh, channel i should use uh, it takes a bit of time but not too not, not too long anyway 55 percent i say it's scanning right now as you can see and then it's going to give me to give me the recommended channel as you can see so i pick the channel i think and to pick the channel i think i just go to following part channel and here i enter the channel i think is best okay then you have the id okay i can switch it on or off and what is that let's say i've got another person next to me using a godox flash also or uh, well using the same frequency actually and uh, maybe his flash is triggering my flash or it's a trigger is triggering my flash so i can put an id to each flash i have a specific id it means that we, even if you receive a signal in the same frequencies and the same channel he will know that it's not for him so it won't uh, trigger uh, uh, if it's not needed so it's an extra to give a proper uh, way of working without interferences then you have the beep uh, beep what is that for well that's logical beep is okay it beeps if i don't want it to beep i click here as you can see it doesn't beep anymore okay so that's be useful if you work working in a church or a concert or whatever you don't want it to beep all the time or you have several flashes and you want to hear tit, 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 tit. sometimes it's useful because you know when it's ready but not everyone wants it so you have this option then you have lights uh, then you decide if this uh, LCD light is on 20, 12 seconds after you touch the screen and you touch any button or it's off or it's always on. You can decide, decide on that. And then you have the LCD and here you can decide the brightness of the LCD. So that's it for the menu. So as you can see, that was a lot of explanation. So I'm going to give you the pros and cons, my opinion, and then <laughs> goodbye. Okay, so... Um, in favor i think the fast really fast recycling time is good uh, because uh, if you uh, used to work in the full power because you work outside with bright sunshine or whatever uh, this is good to have only 1.1 second and uh, remember my canon uh, 580ex i think it was like four to five seconds so if you're doing uh, pictures to someone and uh, in between each uh, triggering, you need to wait like four or five seconds to have the flash ready. That really breaks the way you work. That's really a problem. So I think the fast uh, recycling is really, really good. Second I really like is this. I didn't try them because I didn't have them, but I think these accessories are great. Uh, it's just magneting. You just put them on the head and that's really easy to use. The price is really fine. I think it's uh, 50 euros for the whole pack, $50 for the whole pack. You have a uh, correcting gel, you have a uh, grid, snoot, many things. I think this is really useful and easy to use and uh, just place it and that's it. So I think this is a big plus. I also think that the fact that it gives you uh, some even light uh, with a even uh, drop uh, or fall, out, fall off, I think it's good for people who are going to work uh, with direct lighting and uh, people like I like, do a weddings and things like this I think that may be a, a good option so I think it's good flash so uh, the cons what well, I'm not convinced well I did not have any problem with this flash because I work in manual mode so I had no problem but I checked on YouTube other people complaining about it and uh, I uh, double test checked if they were right and are right in what way that uh, if you work in HSS uh, high sync or uh, in TTL uh, it actually overheats but it does not overheat always it says it's overheating so what's a problem 
Well, there is no uh, thermostat, uh, therm thermostat or heating control in there. What it does, it counts. So if you, you, you for example, you're on TTL and HSS and uh, you uh, start shooting, even at the lowest power, after 40 pictures, like every second or every two seconds, uh, it will give you a signal that is overheating and you have to switch it off. And it's not hot. That's not true. It's just counting 40, uh, sh 40 triggering and it considers uh, this, is, uh, this is hot and this is not reality. It's not the way it is. So uh, if it's happened, it's very easy. You just switch it off and switch it on and then you're ready to go again. Okay. But the problem is that maybe it's actually hot. If you were on full power, and it counts 40 shots and uh, it says it's too hot you switch it off switch it on and then it carries on again but maybe it was hot you just reset the counter but it maybe it's too hot i'm going to burn your flash so it's a bit of a risky business to switch it off or switch it on some people say yeah but uh, on the pro photo it gives you exactly the reality so if it's not hot it won't tell you it's hot and the way it is it's true but pro photo costs three times this one and second, if any flash, whether pro photo or any flash, it gives you a, a overheating warning, you won't be able to trigger, you have to stop. In this one, maybe you had to make some two extra pictures. So you switch it off, switch it on, you make this extra two picture and switch it off. So I think it's more down to knowing your gear and knowing exactly if it's really heating or not. It's not always easy, but the more you know your gear, the more you can push the limit. So, I think that uh, if you make a wedding and you're on TTL and after 40 uh, st uh, shot it stops, maybe it's annoying to switch it off, switch it on, and then you have the doubt whether it was overheating or not. But if it was another flash, uh, there will be no doubt. It will be overheating, but you could not make any more picture, not even one. And actually, you may, may need this extra one. So I think is that a problem yes i would prefer to have a, the reality uh maybe they could uh better the way they uh, manage that and uh, update uh, the firmware so it knows that if it's in the lowest power it's impossible to be overheating and if you at maximum power it's probably you're overheating so maybe something a bit more precise i think so it doesn't give warning when it's not really uh, overheating so would i buy this flash well, personally, for me, no. Why not? Because I never use, uh, or not very often I use flash on my camera. So it means that I would be paying for, paying for a round head, which is more expensive, to get an even light, all this, when actually normally I would be bouncing or using a bouncing light against a wall or using a softbox. So for that, I prefer to use my AD200 or I prefer to use uh, standard flashes, uh, doesn't give me that much. But yes, if I was doing using direct flash towards people, whether it's portrait or whether it's uh, weddings or social or whatever, social reportage or whatever, yes, I think this is a good option because uh, if, especially if you put the dome on the front, it will give you a, a nicer light. Maybe uh, shadows will be what they are, but the fall off will be nicer. So for uh, people who do weddings, I do recommend this flash. For other people, I recommend they save their money and uh, they can actually get uh, the Godox uh, 860, which is about 100 euros or even more, less than this one. And uh, you have this fast recycle time, the same one. So I think this is a, some extra money you may not need, okay? But for social people, for people who do social uh, photography, I do think it's an interesting piece of gear, okay? So thank you for watching this video. If you feel it may help other people, please share it on social networks. If you have not done yet, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's a small button down here and also a small bell. If you click on the bell, you get notified uh, when I upload a new video. My website, ericgibo.com. If you have any question, you can leave a comment below or send me an email to info at ericgibo.com. And below, I also leave you some links of my gear on Amazon and also links to other parts of, of my YouTube channel. Thank you very much to Photosula for uh, lending me this uh, flash unit in the situation we are right now so I could uh, test it. Thank you very much. Take care of yourself. See you soon.